a very strange situation as yep. Rascal gets the crocodile respect. I love to see it. <laughs> the Vi first pick, I think, is kind of a soft uh, target there of yeah. Lucid as well. I mean, they're like, oh no, we forgot the band stretch. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it, Lucid it definitely would have locked it up, I think, if it was if it was given over. But now we can play the Sejuani here, and they could lock something in alongside. It doesn't necessarily have to be an AD mid. The Azir is still quite strong. We've seen that kind of be the go-to. Talia would be a great denial because Vi yeah. Talia is so powerful right now. But they're looking at the Kalista instead here for aiming. And uh, Teddy's found a lot of success on this pick, too, so I do think this is a, a reasonable takeaway. Yep, aiming. Just a big fan of this champion as well. We saw it work out quite well yesterday in Death Sands at the same time. Uh, as Luz, I would like the Talia lock in here. I, I agree with you. I actually think the DRX have kind of set up their draft really nicely just because Talia isn't a flex anymore. You yeah. know? On this patch, uh, she has been... Uh, they attempted to remove her from the jungle. Instead, the Sejuani will be the lock in here and not wanted to give that one away, although there was no chance that it was going to be picked up because Vi is already there in the jungle. Interesting. So Nar is the consideration here, and Rascal going to lock that one away alongside that Talia that we saw coming a mile away. And now what does Showmaker play into it? That's the question. Yeah, that's the big question. Oh yeah, Diana, of course. I think he will probably play Azir. <laughs> I don't think he'll be playing the Diana. He always hovers the Syndra, which I would love to see. The LeBlanc very much suiting the composition here and, and can be quite strong into Vi. We'll see if that is up is, end up what he's going to play here. As I'm struggling with words, I'm, yeah. I guess I'm still jet lagged. Yeah, not this time around. And so, where do we go? Is it going to be just Aatrox locked in now, and then you save counter pick for Showmaker, and he plays something weird like yeah. I don't know, like Acidin, Acidin, or the Zillion? I what think, I'm thinking for some reason. I don't know why. I think that there's a lot of options here. Like even Zeke's would be okay in this draft. Ooh. Has a lot of uh, scaling. GP. Or just Gangplank. <laughs> just Gangplank is fine. Sometimes you just need a bit of pirate. That's, uh, that's, that's kind of what... Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Bringing out the GP. It's been a while. We saw this hovered at EWC, but wasn't actually played. A lot of teams considered it. Uh, and has been a pretty good matchup into the NAR in the past. A yep. lot of additional burst damage, a lot of objective setup. And it's great defensively when you have that Renata as well. So, so much fail safe here for D+. When we get to those objectives later on. And... The Ziggs is going to get locked hey. here for Teddy, and they're going to play the Ziggs Leona. Such an incredibly powerful duo in the bottom lane. We'll be able to stand up to the Kalista decently well. Difficult to dive this composition with the Satchel Charge with Leona there as well. And you have the Talia could join if there is going to be a play made there with Lucid's Sejuani down bottom side. And great follow-up to the engage here, pretty guaranteed. Now, Whoa. Akali, I was going to say, look, it's a perfect Azir angle now. You've got the Gangplank, you've got the late game scaling. The Akali, a little bit riskier. That is a Showmaker pick, though, and this is... I mean, I, d I wouldn't want to play it into Talia. I'll tell you that much. That does not sound like a whole lot of fun. Akali does a lot of dashing around, and Talia does a whole lot of I don't want you to dash around. Um, that's my that's my analysis. Um, what do you think, Wolf? <laughs> I think that is a pretty good take. Uh, the dashing around into the rocks is not ideal. Um, Ziggs can also layer his bombs into your shroud as well. So, you know, it isn't going to necessarily feel too fun to play this Akali, but if it gets out of control early, you start to get those big advantages. And it is going to be a skirmish heavy game here that D plus. going to get to on the map. Let's jump out of the rip. Game one. All right, D plus gear fans out in force. As I haven't seen that Akali skin in a very long time. Uh, Let's see which one it was. I, which one is it's it? It's the freezy one, right? Uh, or is that no? No, that's just, yeah, just the DRX one. It's the mind. DRX one, yeah. And the freezy skin that I was thinking about is actually an Aurelia skin. So I'm just losing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> my brain is just broken. I thought, you know, an extra day. I did I did the desk yesterday. We were a little bit unhinged. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of, you know, you're, you're on camera less, right? You're speaking less. Um, and you have two people talking with you over there. But, you know, I made it through. I thought, okay, well, I got through the tough day. Well, this is going to be fine. But, you know, it's a little rocky. Yeah, it's a bit rocky, isn't it? <laughs> and look, I think uh, Valdez had a rough one, right? Because he, like, was basically just back and then had to play by play. But he did have well-rested Chronicler. True. So maybe us, which is no one can save us. Because the toughest part for Valdez was he had to sit next to me on a plane. Physical damage a bit, which is not something we're used to saying all that much with the amount of double 80 carries we've been seeing. Um, 
Rascal should be able to account for a fair bit of that alongside Sponge. So I do like what this composition does. I do think that uh, D-plus, if they are able to start snowballing, it's going to roll real fast. Yeah, that's definitely true. And we have two great upfront dragons here, which means a lesser soul, no doubt. But Infernal going to feel amazing for this comp and how it fights out in the early and the mid game. Going to be taking these grubs. Kellen does get full vision of it. Lucid possibly able to come on over here as what up, set up. They do have a Nar in the midst of it, though. Gangplank a little bit later on the rotation, but does have Cannon Barrage up and available. Double grubs going to be taken by DRX. Lucid might be able to get one, but there's a seismic shove onto Kellen. He's going to have to flash to get out of the way. The Ignite now ticking down. That is going to be three grubs going over to DRX. Nicely played. And some plate gold. It looks like going over to aiming potentially if he is able to crash this one in. I don't know how much damage he's actually done to this first plate. Okay, well, okay. But I think if you mess it up as D+, plus, there's so many ways this can go wrong. As Sponge is coming up here right now. does have ult and flash. Yep, Kingen does have oranges. The little hop does come in. You can you can actually oranges out of that one as Kingen's looking to keep himself alive. It does not work. And Sponge going to punch him in the back of the head and grab first blood. Yeah, and I was going to leave that one to Ox, but you, you got it. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was Ox's opportunity to talk about the opportunity. Um, uh, Kingen is way up here with no flash. Does he have more oranges? That is the question, as Pled is just going to walk towards him. Barrel is going to come on through here as Rascal's throwing the boomerangs down. And yeah, there's a Vi here once again. And Kingen is very, very much going to be dead. Well, he's, it's going to take a while, and then he's going to be hes going to be—he's going to be dead. There he goes. There he goes. He's dead now. Teddy gets the kill, and that's a Ziggs in the side, uncontested aiming. We'll get some plate gold again here, bottom side. But well, they're going to get a lot of value up here with the Ziggs, and the whole turret will go down. Whenever Teddy decides to satchel it, there it is. Yeah, barely and even needed to, to be honest, because they were making swift work of that turret. Yeah. Aiming is trying to get through this bottom out of it. You can see with all of these grubs being picked up, DRX are just destroying these turrets one after the other. That should be an inner very, very early on. I mean, yeah. it is five grubs, no and here. that's because they just haven't quite killed the sixth one. There it goes. Showmaker, if he TPs, he's in trouble too, and they're just going to take this out. Another satchel, double turret. And this is what I was saying, if you're DRX, you're like, okay, you can have the dragon. I'm going to make something Play else on the map better right now, just avoiding D+. Plus. The power that this comp has, and it's really, really high damage off at Rascal. Yep, Rascal is in a bit of trouble here. There's the flash handshake. Big knock comes down as now Rascal gets underneath the turret. But the Fate Skull is going to get that knock up. Lucid looking to tank the turret for them, but it's not going to be the kill under Rascal this time around. And aiming almost just dies as the turret does so much work. Oh man, D plus can't catch a break. It really can't. I think still going to go in the pros column um, if they were, you know, making a list. Is all right. More satchel range to come through here as the void mites come on down, and that is the almost the entire outer ring. Um, but inner turret as well as two outers already taken here by DRX, and that is going to balloon that gold ever further. And Just over three thousand. If Rascal has a rough laning phase here, if he loses lane to the GP, then none of the plays they've made this game have been po would be possible, but he's controlling it well. They get six grubs, so the Ziggs' power is even higher. No Tristana in this game, but the Ziggs... Yeah, Lucid just hasn't been the proactive player that we've uh, seen him as for quite some time, you know? Hasn't been able to find the angles as Pletter is now going to get hand shook back. There's the Arctic Assault. They get the Permafrost onto the Leona there as well. And normally don't engage onto a Leona. Or maybe that is still going to be the case here as Showmaker gets into the Rascal. Shroud. And my god, the damage from the Nara is massive. But the answer is still going to be there from DRF, from D+. Plus. As Teddy, can he land these water balloons? That's the question. The answer is no. Doesn't quite have the arm for it. And DRX. It's an even trade, and I think that that's still fine here for the squad. The fact that they were able to answer somewhat definitely positive, especially after putting so many cooldowns into a Leona, which we generally frown upon uh, here in the LCK, or just everywhere. Yeah, generally not a good idea. Yeah, 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 generally not. As Lucid is over the Weaver's Wall. Yeah, who is going to be able to move on in, though? You can see they just want to get towards this soul point. Let's see where the Lucid can get there. And they are able to set it up for the rent. Great handshake there as well. As Sponge finds himself in no man's land. The snipe is beautiful. And Kellen's Renata, man. Doesn't matter the game state. You can always find an angle. As now Rascal, speaking of angles, is uh, heading towards this mid lane where the Rift Herald has done so much work. This should be another turret. Yeah, it will be. Yep, there's the satchel. Bye-bye. So still value here for DRX, but you can see 
How well DRX, or rather D plus, it's one of those tough ones, isn't it, where the name yeah. is the same letter. Um, which, how well D plus <laughs> in the mayhem. Certainly something that these champions can do as barrels come on down. That is a tanky Sejuani, but maybe not tanky enough as the Mega Inferno Bomb comes in. But the, oh my goodness, the hostile takeover is too powerful! And there's a Showmaker with a perfect execution. Not able to quite backflip over the wall though, but still, D Plus looking for more. Satchel to try and keep Teddy safe. And it will be able to do so for now. But now we're seeing the power of this D plus comp. Oh, absolutely. And how a good champion that Showmaker really has had some extraordinary games on. As Lucid just gets the heck out of dodge, uh, sees them, and then cues over the wall. He wants out of here as Kingen maybe wanted out of here as well, as he's going to use the oranges. Flash does have the cannon barrage down. They're taking so much damage under the turret. Kingen takes the first one. Now Rascal's gonna die. It's a double kill for the gangplank from the grave. Somehow Kellen lands that handshake. I don't know how he does it. Go go gadget hands or something. <laughs> oh, figures that one out. But two for one under that turret for Kingen. That is too good. Disaster here. Great handshake from Kellen. Speaking of. Yeah, there's another one. Uh, Flutter is gonna have to flash get himself out of the way as the barrel not quite in there as maybe Kingen's over extended now but the hostile takeover through the entire choke point and rascal can't do it this time yeah who's gonna get knocked up the wren should be there the pierce certainly is but the mega inferno bomb is massive and teddy picks up a double cue the yakety sax this game is going completely bananas it definitely is at the end of the day though kellen sets up some really big plays there but the damage of the zigs but d plus didn't start this immediately so he actually has enough time to get over here rotate in on this talia doesn't have weavers well to split up d plus though and they have to walk to the phalanx of barrels yeah and they've got cannon barrage and glacial prison and look at this there is zero vision available this dragon is gonna belong to d plus I mean, he could just keep pushing oh, yeah. here. Rascal might just, just be dead. Kellen's coming through, and he really wants to shake his hand. There's the flash. Cannon Barrage not really doing anything. I don't know whether that was a button that needed to be pressed. You still got some resets coming in, and like you were saying, Showmaker just being a nuisance in the bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, he's just putting the pressure on bottom side here. Deep plus chokes. That really hurts. All right, Trial by Fire needs to come through for that big damage, and aiming just says it doesn't need to be there. Hostile takeover, and Rascal, he flashed before. He doesn't have it available now, as Kellen will be punished. But that is a two for one, and yeah, Teddy might be fed, but they're just not fighting where he can do anything about it. Yeah. He's fighting in chokes only, Pleto. Oh, okay, Showmaker diving on in. That is the entire kitchen sink down on top of Showmaker. But he'll go into his shroud, and he might just be okay. The backflip over the wall, the Arctic Assault to do the same thing as Kingen. He is still looming in the brush, but doesn't find the barrel chain. There to take down Pleta. So they do lose their jungler, but I think with Kellen going will teleport it to the bottom lane. That's not it. Oh no, that means he's definitely not going to be here for this fight. Let's see whether Teddy can get a Mega Inferno Bomb over. He does have it available. And he is in range, but this is just dead. It's just gone. Went down to 83, but it doesn't seem to matter because there was no one in the pit. And D plus have got everything. Now they can just use the Baron to set up for Elder and do it again. And man, what a... Rough call for Draskel to TP bottom at a pivotal moment. I mean, they were so grouped to try, try to deny the Baron moments before. And maybe the idea there was a split call on a team. He just wants to push out bottom to, to try to contest Elder, but ends up being a disaster because they try to come over there anyways, come up with nothing. Now Teddy's ult is on cooldown. Elder spawns in 15. He will get the ult back up in the longer fight here, but D plus complete control. And Rascal does have a Narbar in a decent position, and I guess you could argue that Elder is more important, and it absolutely is, as now Pleta with the Eclipse is able to tank up a few of these barrels. The three-man to come through, and now the Cannon Barrage on top of it. Teddy's the target, but he is able to get himself out of there with that Seraph shield. Showmaker's looking for him, though, and there's a five-point strike. And now the perfect execution. This should be the cleanup for D+. Plus. And there is no response from DRX, and I think D-Plus might just try and push through. Very clean fight for D-Plus in the latter half of the game. Just playing the map better. DRX had a huge lead, lost all the dragons, though, couldn't contest, couldn't break through the barrels as Rascal. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, don't think yeah. Rascal's going to be surviving this one. Oh, maybe he is, because uh, D-Plus are distracted by the base. Yeah, I think they're a little bit more interested in killing the Nexus than killing the Yordle there, as Kellen's going to stop his backs as well. 
He can't oh, even no. get home. Just shaking his hand over and over again. He will get Nard into the wall and likely loses this 1v1. But maybe the base will die first as Bled is being ignored at the same time. There is the death for Kellen as Mega Inferno Bomb comes on through. But it is two turrets and a deadly owner. And then the Nexus goes down. D plus pick up the win in the end. You know, it wasn't the cleanest start, and it was a risky draft. And the Renekton, they pick Tristana, and then you get Talia Vi, yeah. and then you have Talia Vi on Lucid Showmaker, I think which feels all right. I think that's definitely the game plan. That's that's definitely what's going through their minds right now, and I do think that is just what we're going to see. I mean, it's not that anything else wouldn't make sense, but it just feels like the best scenario for Lucid playing Vi, uh, and that's been a recipe for success uh, yeah. over the last two years. Instead, I mean, you can just go Na'Vi, right, and then pick Talia on three, if you would like to. True. Because Tristana is already locked in, so I do like the Vi lock-in. Definitely uh, very strong here. The Nar also really weakens the Cassante pick quite heavily, and I think that's part of why we're seeing it picked so much right now, is it's just so good at pushing lanes, uh, wins a lot of matchups kind of by default because he's ranged, so it's a very safe pick. You know, back in 2021, we saw it blinded a ton. Um, kind of like Gragas we saw last year, yeah. too. And let's see what the response is going to be here for DRX. Going to push the Ezreal up in Pryo here and just grab Ezreal Leona. So this is a great rotation here for DRX because it gives you one of the strongest lanes in the game, as well as great scaling. Double AD carry here. Means you're going to lose some of the uh, AP jungle picks you might have wanted to run for Sponge here in this one. I think Maokai really coming to mind, considering how much Sponge loves to play that champion. But Talia is pretty given. I guess Showmaker's like, can I play Ari? The coach staff would tell him no, and yeah. uh, we're just going to lock it in. Yeah, like, can I just play LeBlanc instead? Because that would be way more fun. But instead, he's going to play the champion that is extraordinarily powerful, can set up for those seismic shoves. And we saw Yehu actually had a great time. Especially... This, they have the Vi on their side, but definitely... I want get Caitlyn. That. That's what I want. I mean, I, I think it's reasonable in this position. Kalista is banned this time around, so Aiming won't be able to try to push the Ezreal in that way. We haven't seen Varus. Um, oh, he's not true. really played in EWC either, except in a weird top scenario um, against a Rumble. And it's just going to be Kellen to Renata. He's like, it's really good into Leona when he keeps walking towards my choke points. Uh, yeah, I don't mind it. Might just be Draven Renata. Could. Could be Draven. Uh, could still be the Caitlyn if they would like to play that lane. Still works out relatively well. As Rascal gonna fight fire with fire here, and by that I mean never mind. Sejuani made it all the way through because they were focusing on the AP junglers. It's going to mean a lot of physical damage is coming in here, and of course not a lot of tanks necessarily on the side of D plus. So I don't think that there's a whole lot of uh, room to punish. But let's see what aiming's going to lock in here. It would be super weird if he just runs. You know, I mean, Caitlyn is strong here. Lucian is not even that bad of a choice. But Aphelios is going to be uh -huh. the answer. Um, it, it's not bad by any means, but it is definitely outranged by Ezreal, and there's a lot of threats to get on top of this pig. And my my biggest weird thing about this draft for, for D+, is that the draft feels so, in some ways very disjointed. You have the Vi, Talia, then you have the Renata disengage into the Jax. Sejuani feels okay, but it's double 80 carry. The draft is both trying to go in really hard, but also trying to kind of walk away at the same time. And you have the Gnar that can kind of tie it all together. I think it was good Gnar play from King and is famous for his Gnar. That this composition will work. He's got a this guy's champion. See what he can do with it as we jump onto the rift for game number two. I'm so glad that we got to see some health bar there. Uh, we can see that the uh, structures in the base for D plus are actually healthy. Um, so that is certainly good to know as aiming avoids the first mystic shot. You know, I uh, one pick we didn't talk about that I think DRX definitely could have played with this draft is the Ivern. Um, and they oh yeah, that would have been the, cool. The Sejuani instead, as I they they were playing the Jax though, so I guess like you'd have to yeah. put a tank in that. Oh, yeah, they would. Yeah, would kind of work. I guess they didn't necessarily have to, um, you know, play the Jax as well, but they wanted to more heavily go into uh, you know kind of follow up the Sejuani synergy with Jax is, is really strong. So definitely as a duo. Yeah, and that makes sense. 
Um, the Aphelios, interestingly enough, you know, I feel like is less all-in than going something like a Draven does have a lot of late-game scaling components and will rip through the Leona's health bar. So if DRX just play the same way where they just put See, then he does have a biscuit as Lucid's making his way in. There's the Eclipse. Great handshake and first blood onto Teddy, and I don't think they're done just yet. They're going to try and set up for this kill here as Aiming's the one that picks up the aggro. He'll get away from the turret, though, as the teleport does come on through. Aiming just walks it off. And that is a plate going down in the meantime as well. He is just extraordinarily polite. That's what we know. He's, he's, you know, we've seen so much Renata when it's just an anti-dive setup. We've seen so much Renata when it's Renata plus Callista, you know, Renata plus another champion that does really well with all-ins like the Draven. Kellen's making a case for Renata to be played with any scaling AD carry, it doesn't matter. Uh, with how well he's hitting these handshakes and pretty insane performance back to back by this man. The game's not over by any means, but it's a huge gold lead here now for D+. And pushing this Vi, Ooh. I mean a little bit more of a spicy one. Uh, it is three grubs going over to a Tristana composition, which I think you should always um, pay attention to. But if D-plus can continue the momentum here, it could be a real worry as Kellen just walks towards Splitter and they're going to trade blows and nothing too much is going to happen. Big wave stacking up here. As we can see, the Vi going to work on the Drake. They will have full information as the Dragon's going to yell when it dies. Sponge is on a ward here as well, so his position given away at the same time. There's the buffer from Yahoo this time around. Pushing it forward so much with the bottom side control. That flash was so weird, but it worked so well! Okay, oh, Kellen! Just, okay, just, Kellen! He's just giggling, man! He's having a bit of a giggle! <laughs> and let's do a bit of a check-in. So it's about 2,000 gold the lead uh, for D+. A lot of that coming from this bottom lane, as you were talking about. Those uh, two kills going over to Lucid, of course, as now Kellen finds himself in a very uncomfortable spot, uh, which is called the Death Chamber. Yeah, that's... Uh just yeah, should I make it throwing some rocks around here as in comes Lucid. There's the cease and desist. And Sponge is in a real rough spot. There's the flash forward. The threaded volley comes down. Yahoo is in position, though. Showmaker does get the kill, but goes down immediately afterwards. And Rascal with the teleport the in. on the bottom lane. And this is going to be the, the really big cost. Because you talked about the Void Grubs. You always have to keep an eye on that with Tristana. Now they're not going to get the, the five or six. That is really what you want as Tristana. So unfortunate here for DRX. But... You know, the game state on the bottom side of the map was so favored to D+, plus that they were like, well, if Teddy's not going to show up, Lucid says, I'm going to kill somebody. And he, <laughs> he went in and forced it, and unfortunately for him, um, you know, it didn't end up working out. It took a little bit too long, so the Persona does pick up a kill out of it as well. And this is some plate gold going over to aiming as Rascal, because he TP'd bottom, just having to babysit this lane for a little bit. Tristana is dueling topside. We'll be able to back off here. He loses a little bit of farm. Um, Teddy's getting some free plate gold over here meanwhile but yeah definitely uh could have gone better there for d plus but at the end of the day i think they're pretty happy with the scenario they still have a lot of control as showmaker comes in yeah looking for teddy now as well as he's on these rocks can arcane shift out of them but i don't think it's going to matter he is going to go the other direction tries to throw down as many abilities as possible but lucid says vault breaker and uh teddy is going to be lying on the floor so dk now moving that lead further forward drake has just spawned as well Got Chemtech into Ocean. It's going to be a Cloud Soul, isn't it? It probably is. Oh, uh, trying to be alive. It's okay. Sponge is going to be spotted. Pletter is also spotted. Kingen still just going to continue jungling as the Nah. And uh, that will be the top outer turret taken here, I believe. A little bit of a race here. And uh, oftentimes you just say, yeah, Tristan is probably going to win. Yeah, especially with Rascal turning up bottom lane. Yeah, especially with nobody showing up here. Um, oh, it's a Mountain Soul. It is Mountain Soul. Okay. As uh, Yahoo will just push this wave in. He's going to be on the minds of D+. Showmaker moving up there does have Weaver's Wall at the ready, so he can be there at a moment's notice. Sponge and Yahoo just going to be taking down this blue buff. And I think that Shelly should just go over to D+, here without too much of a response from DRX outside of Rascal going for a shove in that bottom lane. Teleport's available for Showmaker. I don't know whether they really want to use it here to take uh, to protect this turret that is... It's done, though. Yeah, it's it's really basically just standing there already dead. So it is going to be removed. And DRX, so Mirror Mana almost done. Uh, Sponge going to be spotted here. There's a wall up. Nar into the wall there at the same time as Vault Breaker comes on in. Rascal, relatively tanky, though. And so is uh, Showmaker seems to be completely fine. Rascal continues to be toyed with here underneath the turret. And there's the hop. Skip and a jump. 
and there is a dead Jax under the turret. Meanwhile, I mean, there's sort of fights happening everywhere as the teleport immediately towards this mid lane. And Showmaker is going to turn up. Should be able to help take down this outer turret. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, same thing's going to be happening here as Rift Herald was dropped and now he's getting escorted by Kingen. Turret goes down on the top side, but can they actually save Kellen as a seismic shot? Oh, the handshake actually kind of wrecks Showmaker there, but it does not matter at all. Platter is still real dead, and Teddy just had to watch. I think Platter played that extremely well. Kingen's going to get this turret, oh, so even man. though Tristana is pushing top, this is a much bigger win for D+. Overall, you can see Kingen pulls ahead. Oh, yeah, was a key part of, of this for D+. Don't want to fight without optimal setup for the Aphelios. Now he's got it. Yeah. Oh, man, there is so much vision control here as well. Showmaker can cut off this fight at a moment's notice at the same time as there's the attempted escape from Lucid. He does manage to flash away and then not able to get in for the smite. So that's going to be the first rake for DRX. Can they get themselves out of here, though? That's the question as Kingen chasing after Sponge. Cease and assist. He goes so incredibly far, but Yahoo still not able to keep himself alive. The handshake to save Lucid. He also had the bailout as the hostile takeover just barely not enough, but the double knockback on the Vault Breaker is decent. Rascal still able to take down Lucid, but I think it's still a big win for D+. Let's and see. Kellen once again chasing after Rascal. What is this? This is personal beat <laughs> in these two players. It's starting to feel like it, but I think it's more of a story of uh, DRX losing objective fights and Rascal being the last man standing. He is going to be able to get the execute, it looks like here. Kellen can't catch up with him, so he's going to get it. Down he goes. Oh, so close. Yeah, Heal, basically, until this next fight. And LDR second, I think a great choice for aiming Ooh. Kellen. Kellen face checks once again. This is the second time it happens as he's just going to get out. Okay, we'll take the Buster Shot taxi. <laughs> and it does do a fair bit of damage, uh, but it gets you to your to your location. True shot barrage. Kellen's like not even close. He's, he's having a, their, he's, their eyes is okay. All right, there's season assist on to Teddy. He does arcane shift, but then he falls <laughs> into the side shove. Oh, Kellen! Kellen. Okay, he's just the main character. That's what I I realized. He's just the main character of this series. That's that was how it insane. Is. That was just insane. And the last time it happened, he pulled him out of the seismic shove. This time he's like, oh no, don't worry, Shemek, I got you. I just want Kellen to go win worlds now and give us like a lasso skin for Renata. Oh, yeah. heck yeah. Give that lasso, because he is just roping him in that lasso <laughs> over and over again. As DRX get the second consolation break, maybe. King has something to say about it. Yeah, he's able to throw a bunch of rocks in here. It's okay, they do get the dragon. Over the wall now, but Showmaker looking for a little bit. Seismic Shove has to flash to get himself out of the way, but look at these health bars. They're going down so quickly. And Platter, he's going to have to be the sacrificial Leona. Lucid going to be able to take him down. They've got the Baron now, though. They're looking to push, and now with a man advantage, they should be able to take down quite a few of these turrets. They certainly should, and the game is just over. And they still end up getting a big win. Oh, over here. We got another little battle happening here. Or maybe it's a big battle as Cease and Assist goes so far. It's once again the Tristana falling down though. And on the other side, the Vi is going to get rid of the Ezreal. No more damage remains. And even though they managed to get the little dragon, DRX not going to be able to find too much more. Lucid also not too worried about this whole situation. And Showmaker, cool guys don't look at explosions and doesn't watch while his jungle it takes down the support. Rascal once again is just wandering elsewhere on the map because he's just not welcome in his yeah, own base I, right now. He, uh, he did, he could have just gone back but wanted to try to stop them from taking that turret out. But it's a Baron buff, he's alone, commits a teleport, gets nothing out of it, so just minus one teleport for your side laning Jax. I mean, this game is practically over, but uh, that would have been a nice tool for another objective, you know, in the future. He's not going to have it here. Three minutes until the next Dragon, maybe he'll be able to get back into a side lane, but I just don't think it's that kind of game. I don't think <laughs> that's not great. The 080 carry comps, we don't like those, especially when you only have three people on the map. As uh, we found Rascal in a side lane, he is going to be able to get the Counter-Strike onto Lucid. That's going to give him an avenue out of there, but had to invest the Flash in order to do so. And these inhibitors, they weren't taken in that play. We haven't got... DK are like, yes, you can have a third Mountain Drake. We will take your Nexus. And uh, how do you feel about that trade? Is now Kingen going to get jumped on here as he just crushes away from the Solar Flare? There's the Weaver's Wall trying to get the Stragglers, and he'll find two as... That's just not going to work there, Rascal. Unfortunately, the Counter-Strike doesn't work, and aiming is going to be out of pounds. Hostile takeover is gorgeous once again for Kellen. And C+, they're like the Harlem Globetrotters now. They are just walking all over DRX. 
And I think that this one, it's been over for a while, but I think it's well and truly over now. It's definitely done now. DRX, a valiant attempt, but D plus gonna go up to six and one. And now we completely understand why the first pick five came in. Nine, one, and seven for Lucid. Absolutely phenomenal performance. Everybody else augmenting this composition gorgeously on D-Plus' side. And that's a clean 2-0, nothing to see.